In this video, we're going to take a look at creating an integration with Slack and then automating the process of posting messages on a channel within your Slack account. So first and foremost, we need to set up the Slack account that we want to work with uh, and securely store the authentication details for that particular account. So we're going to come into Home System Security and KeySafe and we're going to select the Slack option from the list. We can then give that Slack account and, and title or a name, and here we'll just keep it simple and call it Slack, and we'll go ahead and create that, that key. Now we need to connect to Slack to the relevant account to pass in the details for the account we want to use and the authentication details. So we're going to specify our team, and then we're going to specify our user's details. Once we've done that, we then need to authenticate that Hornbill is allowed to perform certain actions in Slack. We'll go ahead and authorise the app. With that set up, we can then come back to our business process tool and decide where we might want to actually invoke and use that integration. So in this example here, in my desktop process, I'm going to come in I'm going to break the line at a particular point in the process, and obviously you could use this as many times as you require. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invoke the integration call option. Now I'm going to specify what I actually want to do, and using the Hornbill integration bridge, the method I'm going to choose is going to be for Slack. And on this occasion, it's actually just going to be a case of posting a message, but as we can see here, there's lots of different options that are available to me. In doing so, the credentials that we use to connect to Slack in the account and, and to be authenticated uh, will be defined here. Obviously, I've only got one Slack uh, account or key save created, so that's the only one that's available. If you have multiple, then there'll be a drop down provided. I then go ahead and decide and configure the uh, input parameters. First and foremost, where am I going to post this message to? What channel of inside my Slack account do I want to post this on? The general one is the, the one that's set up, but I have created a different channel that I want this to be. Uh, posted to, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the details of the, uh, the message that I want to post. So I'm going to go in here and say that I, I might want to use this if a major incident is reported, and I might put some text in, but I might want to combine that with variables from the request against which this process is running. Uh, an obvious one to include would be the request ID, but I also might want to include the summary information again from the request which this process is running against. Uh, and in here, if I've used a get request information node ahead of this integration call, I can also pass in other variables like the summary, which I'll do on this occasion, and then the user which this is going to be posted by. I might then also optionally want to post back the URL for this particular post into the request from which this automation is being driven, either just so I can demonstrate it in this, uh, in this video, uh, or use it as an audit trail. Equally, you could post it to um, uh, custom fields if that's required. So I'm just going to choose the automated task option. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to put post to timeline. I'm going to specify the entity requests, update request, and on this occasion timeline. And then I need to specify the text that I actually want to push back onto the timeline. So on this occasion I actually want to pass in actually one of the output parameters from that Slack integration. Uh, and here I want to combine it with the rest of the uh, URL. So I'm just going to put in here uh, the URL for Slack and then using the variable picker and my integrations and the integration call, I want to include the variable which is the channel which has been posted to. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that and then join back up my process. I'm going to save it, validate the changes I've made and then go ahead and publish that as the latest version which I want to be used. With that all done, we can come back in and we'll go to our request list and we'll raise a request to invoke that process. So here I'm going to choose the customer. I'm going to specify either the service or the catalog item against which that process is running. I'm going to put in some information relating to this. So we'll have here users are unable to access to email. Um, good day, it's, uh, affecting 
multiple users. We're going to make decisions about its request type, categorization if it's required. We'll flag this one as a, a major uh, issue off the back of multiple users being affected. Then obviously we might come in and associate CIs, sites, etc. Whatever you've really built into your progressive capture flows. And once that's created, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, view incident 368 on this occasion. With that request then loaded, the business process is going to have been invoked and any automated actions that have already been configured will, will take place. So here an email has been sent, it's been assigned to a team. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take ownership of that one myself. And in doing so, any of the other checkpoints that are marked uh, will be visual. So we can see here that the priority has been set. And then we're actually uh, implementing our comms plan, which is the next action. Now, as part of that, we're doing a variety of different things, but we can now see here that a message has been posted to our Slack account. And if we click on that URL, it's going to take us into Slack, onto the channel we posted, and here we can see the message includes the text, the variable of the request, and also the summary information that we logged that request against. Thanks for watching.